had some really great speakers here in the past uh, few weeks. We've learned about some of the nuances of nitrogen pollution and the real uh, science behind how things are working in different bays. We've learned about uh, how the, the, um, the management structure of water on Long Island isn't really set to, to the challenges that we face today. We've learned from uh, fr uh, some of the successes that we've had, the Pine Barrens Act that really helped um, make it so that things aren't worse than they are and some of the other things like the Community Preservation Fund on the East End. And we've learned that um, uh, suburban sprawl doesn't pay. It doesn't reduce our taxes. If suburban sprawl paid for itself in lowering taxes, Long Island would have the lowest taxes uh, in the country. And so what I hope to get across today is that um, this is, in fact, a solvable problem, and working together, we can, we can solve this problem. When I was a kid growing up on the south shore of Long Island, if you weren't a clamor, uh, either your neighbor or your family member, uh, or, or you had friends who were, uh, clamming was a big part of uh, the industry. And when I came to um, the Nature Conservancy about 15 years ago, science had just started to roll out about how um, the impact of losing all those clams and the, and the occurrence of harmful algal blooms. And a bunch of experiments were done to show that if those clams had still been there, if the overfishing hadn't occurred, uh, might we be less susceptible to issues like brown tide? And the work uh, showed that that exactly was the case, that our bays were more prone to harmful algal blooms like brown tide because of the uh, lower numbers of shellfish. And so I became heavily involved um, working for the Nature Conservancy where we owned 14,000 acres of Bay Bottom and Central Gate South Bay trying to restore hard clams. And um, we've invested a lot of resources in that. And it's been about kind of two steps forward, one step back. And we continue to have some algae bloom uh, setbacks. And it's really hard to get these shellfish populations established when you have chronic uh, algae blooms. We've been involved in shelf, uh, seagrass restoration, um, trying to bring our eelgrass meadows back to places where uh, they used to be and they are no longer. Uh, and the honest truth is the results have been uninspiring. Um, the, the only real success has been in, in some of the most pristine areas left on the East End. We've uh, done a lot of work studying salt marsh integrity, understanding if our salt marshes can keep up with sea level rise. Um, they, they're very important in protecting our, social commu our uh, coastal communities. And what we've learned is that the impacts of nutrient pollution are weakening our marshes. Um, you can see from this slide, there's actually some CAT scans uh, on this side of the root masses in areas that have high nitrogen pollution and low nitrogen pollution. And it turns out that the, the grasses themselves make less roots when they don't need to, when there's so much uh, basically fertilizer in the water. And so they tend to fall apart, like you can see in this photo here. Um, and then if you've been paying attention, you know that we've had some pretty uh, serious fish kills. This is a result of uh, low oxygen in the water when all these plants decay uh, or are respiring at night. We have no oxygen. Um, and so the, uh, after sunsets, uh, this is what happens to the fish. This is from last year in Peconic River. And it turns out all of these uh, different symptoms are, have the same cause. Uh, it's overloading of our surface waters with too much nutrients. And in this case, uh, nitrogen is the primary nutrient, and it's reactive nitrogen in the forms of nitrates and ammonia, uh, a lot of that um, stemming from urea or fertilizers. And, and as a scientist, some of these symptoms were occurring in places uh, where we didn't have a clear source of, of nutrient pollution. We knew these symptoms were, were directly related to it. And in places where we had big pipes, sewer pipes, like the western Long Island Sound, uh, Jamaica Bay, the western bays of Nassau County, it was pretty clear what the problem was. But it really wasn't until we started to get together with the folks who were studying our drinking water supply, which is underground, that we started, we really found the smoking gun. Uh, this chart here is from a um, drinking water well from Bicycle Path in Brookhaven. Uh, a lot of the, the wells from the Suffolk County Comprehensive Management Report on water show very, very similar trends. And you can see the trend in this is that uh, it before development was really intense, there was very low nitrates in the groundwater, and it just keeps increasing. And trying to understand where that increase is coming from uh, in our groundwater, 
uh, we did a, a lot of analyses to see um, how land use is impacting the, the quality of our groundwater underneath. And it turns out uh, on the bottom of this sheet, you can see that in Suffolk County, cesspools and septic systems are a major source of the nitrogen pollution in our bays and harbors. In uh, Huntington and Northport, it's about 71%, 69% in Great South Bay, 61% in Mariches and Shinnecock, and about 43% in Peconic Bay, where there's still a big agricultural input from the east end, uh, from the North Fork. The good news is that, um, that people are paying attention to this. Uh, it's gotten uh, a good level of attention, and particularly the connection between the resilience of our communities our coastal communities on Long Island, uh, the falling apart of the, the salt marshes, as well as thinking about the long-term desirability, what drives the economy, what makes people want to live on Long Island. And that is largely the, the idea that we are coastal communities, the boating and the fishing, our access to beaches. Um, it's really hard to envision um, people really wanting to spend a lot of money to live and work in coastal communities where you might not be able to swim in the water, eat the seafood, and in some cases where you can't even flush your toilet at high tide. This chart is a little bit complicated, but I want to show it because um, in addition to the kind of sewering projects that are, that are slated, that I think are, are, are good for the communities where they're slated for, there's um, some really exciting um, new information on, the, on uh, septic systems that can reduce the amount of nitrogen in the groundwater. And this is a, a little bit of a complicated chart. They have this similar problem in many, many states around the country and in the state of Florida. Consultants were, ha were challenged to put together a very, very simple septic system that had only one moving part that could reduce nitrogen. And what this chart shows, it's actually a, a map of someone's backyard. The first map is the nitrogen plume. That, the red part is about 40 milligrams per liter. Uh, of nitrogen underneath where the uh, septic system was, where it drained. And then two years later, after installing a relatively simple drain field, uh, almost no nitrogen in the groundwater, uh, close to zero, uh, right, underneath the, right underneath the plume. And the exciting thing is that Suffolk County is in the midst of now starting to approve these for use. And uh, what we're hoping is that we can see a transition away from the old standard cesspools and septic systems that we have on Long Island. Um, this is uh, uh, an image of, of a new house being developed and the kind of equipment that needs to go in for a traditional Long Island cesspool. These basically, these big cement rings are put in the ground and they basically force inject untreated sewage into our, drink, into our drinking water aquifers and they, that eventually flows into our bays. One of my colleagues jokes that the little porta potty uh, next to those septic rings might actually be a better solution than the septic rings themselves. But, some, but what's exciting is just last week, one of the first modern drain fields was, was installed here in Suffolk County in Mastic Beach. And the, you can see that everything on this drain field, the reason I'm showing you the back of a pickup truck, it, everything in, the, in a modern drain field fits in the back of a pickup truck. And so um, in terms of cost of bringing all this kind of heavy equipment to a site uh, versus uh, bringing a pickup truck full of uh, things to a site, um, we're talking about a very comparable cost in terms of the d these new systems that are much more efficient. This is just some images of um, some, uh, some, in fact, Suffolk County inspectors scratching their head and, and just, you know, thinking, uh, I suppose, is this going to be the future, these shallow water drain fields? What's really exciting about these drain fields is they, um, they not only uh, can reduce, will, will reduce the nitrogen input, but there's other contaminants of concern in our, in our wastewater things like uh, pharmaceutical drugs, the things that are in shampoos, even flame of retardants that are in children's clothing that we wash. They all uh, pose a threat to the quality of our drinking water. And so what, uh, what's being proposed is basically a solution that would address both nitrogen and the quality of our drinking water, some really smart things. And uh, it turns out that, that these new systems can be much more adaptable. This is actually an image of a, um, an old structure in Rhode Island where one of these was installed. In this situation, they were able to simply, uh, this is a historic building. The owners did not want to have their 
um, their flowers and fences and the historic structures disturbed. The installers were able to simply lift up the, the bluestone tiles, roll up the sod, install the drain field, and have everything looking pretty much like it was in, in pretty short order. So this is some, some pretty exciting things, and I think this is the future for Long Island. There's, uh, there's really good news in that I, in my career I have never seen federal agencies, the EPA, state agencies like the DEC, Suffolk County Department of Health, um, Stony Brook University Center for Clean Water Technology, all working so closely together uh, with unified goals in mind. It, it really is an unprecedented level of cooperation. Um, it's going to take the citizens and residents and voters of Long Island to keep the pressure on, to keep the momentum going. But I, I got to say, in good faith, I think everybody is really working hard towards, the, towards doing the right thing. So um, as a resident, perhaps, uh, what, what is it that you can do in terms of septic systems? Not everyone's going to update their septic system right away. Not everyone's going to have an opportunity to hook up to sewers, but there are going to be things that you can do. First of all, some folks might not even know if they have a cesspool or a standard septic system or where it, are, where it is. It might be beneficial to start looking into it so that you know <clears throat> what it is that your, your home has and that if there's maintenance involved in that, that, you, that, that maintenance is taken care of. But we, are, um, we believe that in November, there's going to be several opportunities, perhaps more than one ballot initiative on the ballot for voters to vote yes for clean water. And uh, I don't know at this point what the details of those will be, but uh, strongly encourage people to pay attention to that. Uh, and then talk to your neighbors, talk to your family, talk to your friends so that people are aware of the issues and that they have an opportunity to do something. Um, in a couple of weeks, I mean, today is Earth Day. In a couple of weeks, for about Memorial Day, we're hoping to have a lot of information on our website, uh, some small videos explaining how nitrogen pollution works, some of the impacts, and some testimonials from, from Long Islanders all the way from the Western Bays to Montauk Point. And uh, I, uh, hopefully that will be useful to you as well. And again, hopefully you can share that and get some use out of it.